failure, disgrace, game journalists, politics, VTubers, punk ducks upload schedule. These things are synonymous, but I never thought I'd equate them to an entry in one of my favorite game series, so I'll do my best to not say them. I will make a checklist to not use these words to the best of my ability. Fairness is a mantra and a word I support heavily. Everyone should have the ability to be judged fairly. People, pets, food, games, movies, music, etc. You're wondering why I'm so negative right off the bat. Well, I don't want to be negative right off the bat. It's, it's just, it, it's hard. It's really hard. But I've never been one to look at something tough to achieve and shied away from it. I caught the tuna twice pre-patch, by the way. But I'm I'm not confident this time. Mostly because the Soxite series was never meant to be intentionally negative. Aside from the first one, that one wasn't very good. But I've evolved. I wanted to highlight the positives of something you may not have seen before so you can see them for yourself. I saw the light in many VR games many might have missed. I underlined the effort and love that Battlefield Hardline has when others wouldn't. But I can't sit by and let people lie to you. I don't want blind optimism or an, or lightly veiled comedy to mask just how bad of a situation we're in. And by bad situation, I'm finally talking about Battlefield 2042. Battlefield 2042 released recently to some pretty harsh reviews, uh, some others accurate and some just plain blind. I'm gonna be frank. Hi, I'm frank, this game is fine, but I can't let fine slide in one of my favorite series. Fine is unacceptable when the pieces come together for a game like this. There were five very talented dev teams working on just this game. It's unacceptable. I'm gonna preface this review by letting everyone know this is a TLDR of the video, just in case my voice gets a little too annoying or you don't wanna sit through the whole thing. I don't suggest you buy this game right now. At its current state, we might be having a Battlefield 5 on our hands. When Battlefield 5 first came out, it was not very good. But in a couple of years, Battlefield 5 is fantastic. It is genuinely fun. But if you do buy 2042, because you were like me, and you wanted to support one of the last few IPs of EA, do not play this game alone. First of all, you don't play Battlefield alone anyway. It's a team-based game with squad mates. But the randoms in the Battlefield game will never be as fun to interact with as your friends will be. I played this game majoritively with my friend Tom. Tom is a great friend of mine. I don't have too many others that own 2042 that are as skilled, as smart, and as handsome as Tom. So it was just us. And I can honestly say, when we stopped trying too hard and we just let the game break on itself, we had a pretty great time just playing this broken mess of a game. I cannot suggest you play this game by yourself at all. But continuing, back in June, I was invited to an EA summit. I mentioned this on stream multiple times. I was blessed, honored even, to be invited to not one, but two unveilings of Battlefield 2042. I saw the trailer early, I saw it all. The wingsuits, the VTOLs, the maps, the robot dogs, all of it. I was under NDA, so I couldn't tell anybody what I saw. I just said you'd be surprised. Well, I was surprised too, but I was mostly surprised at the gameplay trailer. I was scared. I was trying to cope and come to terms with the fact the gameplay trailer showed things that I knew were going to be bad changes to the game, and they were going to be so impactful that only a delay of massive length could save it. But I tried to be positive. I gave Battlefield 5 a chance, and it's great. Not on launch, but it is now. I just knew that if I got to customize my guy to a pretty decent degree, it would be enough for me to forgive what I saw to a lesser extent. Because I know things change, things can be better, and I have been optimistic in the past and I have been rewarded for it. But this time my faith was misplaced, horribly. When Battlefield's creative director himself told me, Jack Frags, Neebs Gaming, and others at this summit that specialists were a main appeal of this Battlefield, I, I was speechless. I, I was scared. I, I didn't want to see Battlefield become like Modern Warfare. To be clear, I have no issues with Modern Warfare, but it doesn't take a genius to understand that Modern Warfare is not Battlefield. Third person executions, specialists, all the personality I've seen and fallen in love with in this series was gone. This entry seemed soulless, a phrase that I rarely use but fits so perfectly. And I still, STILL after seeing the train wreck that was the PR, the awful press, and the doubling down on the specialists, after an overwhelming majority of negativity came from them being added, I still held faith. Because giving people second chances has paid off in the past, so I still 
had faith. My thought process was, if the game was fun in the end, my complaints would fall on deaf ears because fun is the main goal of a video game in the first place. If I could find enjoyment in 2042, then I would have forgiven DICE, just as I had done it in the past with Battlefield 5. Fast forward a bit in time, and I get to play the technical test and the beta. And to sum them both up, they were not good. But judging the main game off of a beta or an alpha is small dick energy and I won't do that. However, what I do look at is the framework that the technical is based off of. Bugs were not a problem I was concerned with. I'm a Battlefield veteran, all the way from Bad Company 1. Bugs on launch are customary, it is a part of this series. The great thing about bad launches is that bugs on launch go away eventually. In case people were unaware, when people were saying, oh, the optimization is bad, the bugs are bad, the thing does the thing and it's not supposed to do that because it's a bug. I agree, bugs suck, bugs are painful to deal with, but I have wonderful news for you. They fucking go away eventually. The only thing about the bugs that pissed me off were when people were defending them blindly. Oh my god, Jay, you're judging the game based off an alpha that's months old. Well, the playtest was actually two weeks old, but I still didn't mind. No one that loves Battlefield gives a shit about the bugs. They are not a problem. They will go away, just as they have done in Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Hardline 1 and 5. Bugs are not an issue. I have been revive bugged, killed by a tree, crushed by closing doors, knifed from 30 feet away, teleported to another point on the map. My parachutes never work, and I'm still not mad at the bugs. The poor way the technical test was handled was not the problem, and I will fight tooth and nail that a beta being bad is not a big deal. I just looked at a handful of mainline things that I look for in every battlefield. Am I having fun? How are the weapons? Are the vehicles OP? How's the customization? And how are the maps? In the technical test in open beta, I noted this. The weapons, the few available, were below average. I didn't like the sound design on the weapons. They felt plastic and weak. The only way to get a shitload of kills was to use the default rifle since it was the best in the game. So right off the bat, I was in a bad mood because this marked the sixth battlefield in a row where LMGs were weak. And by weak, I mean they did less damage than any SMG or rifle I had, and even though the LMG fired faster, had longer effective range, and the LMG's base damage was higher, it still was just weaker than any rifle or SMG. So even though the numbers reflected a different weapon than the one I was holding, right from the beginning I was really sad. I mean, sure, yeah, snipers and rifles are really easy to get kills with, but I, I didn't want to use those guns. I don't like taking the easy route. That's why I usually knifed people in Battlefield 4. And to add salt to that wound, the melee kills in this game are awful as well. Melee kills are restricted to one execution, and every melee attack that is not behind someone is a regular attack. There's no more direction based executions, like previous titles had mastered. I was heartbroken. I felt defeated. I felt betrayed by the series I had supported since Sarge told Haggard his retirement plans in Bad Company 1. So far on my checklist, my weapons are not satisfying, and my melee has been reduced to a QTE with less results and less interactivity. Well, how are the vehicles I kept complaining about in 4, 5, and 1? Well, they're worse. They're actually terrible to deal with. The hovercraft is way too fast and agile for the damage it dealt. Jeep was fine, and the tanks are exactly the same in four, and the helicopters are even more broken than ever. They have regenerative health, so there was zero incentive to bring a repair torch, just snipe people from far away, and then run away for free HP. Helicopters are the worst of all. When you finally landed a missile on them, they just prop their flares, which is fair because that's what flares do. But then finally, the flares are off cooldown, and you're ready. You're ready to get locked and you're dead. Vehicles in the playtest were just so goddamn awful to deal with. But I guess my opinion can't hold much water. I brought the ammo box most of the time. I only brought a rocket a couple times. I couldn't use the rocket ever because no one ever brought the box except for me. Vehicles in Battlefield 5 were manageable because I could bring the plunge mine, which was a risk versus reward weapon, and an ammo box. So I could effectively deal with a vehicle if I was skilled enough. But not this time. There weren't any dedicated support classes in the technical, so I couldn't bring anti-armor and a way to supply it. My team wasn't of any help either. That's just two things on my list that just were not manageable. Fast forward, and the game comes out. Frankly, nothing important changes other than adding everything, so a full actual review can begin without any it's an alpha excuse. Well, how was the customization? And I, I can't, I, 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 I can't. 
can you look me in the eye and tell me that these specialists were a good idea? Why didn't you sell these people as skins? Do you want to be compared to Apex Legends so bad? The only good battle royale on the market right now, and you wanted to compete with that. By dragging the battlefield name through dirt to add restrictive customization to a retarded degree? When I complained about Battlefield 1's lack of anti-vehicle shit, I complained because there was one class with actual good gear to deal with tanks that were absolute monsters in Battlefield 1. Now, you're letting me put C4 on everyone. Sorry, C5. Yeah, that's cool, but now I can't take the fucking ammo box. I'm a support main. I want to bring this fucking box and make sure my team is always supplied. Why can't I take C4 with me as well? In a game of 128 people, I have to be limited to a four-player squad and then fucking beg them to have an ammo box. Or I can bring one myself and fuck myself out of a vehicle destroying gadget. Do you understand how much that fucking sucks? One gadget and a specialist gadget? I don't give a fuck how great the wingsuit is if I can't fucking put it on someone else. I have to play Sundance to get the wingsuit. Really? Really? What if I wanted to like put it on Pike? What if I wanted to put it on Angel or Rao? I can't swap gadgets except one specific one. What retard on the executive team thought this was a good idea? I don't fucking like any of these people except Irish. He's perfect. Except I can't take Irish's gadget off of him and put it on someone else or take someone else's gadget and put it on Irish. I'm not fucking mad that I can't make my own soldier. I am, but not to a huge extent. I'm fucking mad these guys have gear I can't put on someone else. I want to put the wingsuit on Rao. I want to put the hacking gadget on Angel. I want to put the healing dart on Irish. I can't do that. Then you give me this dinky single gadget and tell me to go fuck myself. I can't believe how awful you've treated your player base with these changes. What were you? Well, I don't understand what's going through your head. Yeah, this was going to be longer, but my game has crashed multiple times. Getting footage has been a pain in the ass. Editing this has been a pain in the ass. I I'm just done. I am so unbelievably pissed at 2042 and the direction it went. I don't even want to work on this video anymore. It wouldn't have been such a big deal if the game itself was the problem, but it has left the game and become a problem outside of the game. I, I don't even want to work on it anymore. Sorry.